suit shorts tributes to Black Panther in a full body floral drip. 2018 served up fits that show just how much of a fashion showcase the NBA draft has become. These are a far cry from the much more conservative and often hilariously baggy choices of decades past, but changing trends don't tell the full story of this spectacle. The NBA has been holding an annual draft since 1947, back when it was still known as the Basketball Association of America. You'd be hard pressed to find a whole lot of visual evidence of the first 30 editions of the draft, but everything changed in 1979. Number one pick Magic Johnson rocked a slick three-piece suit before breathing new life into the league in a remarkable rookie season. The draft was televised for the first time in 1980, but the new decade didn't get too exciting until 1984 when Hakeem Olajuwon hit him with the red bow tie and Charles Barkley went with the burgundy blazer and tie. MJ was busy training for the Olympics and whatnot, so he opted for a simple polo in a satellite interview. Perhaps you can turn that Bulls thing around. What do you think? Hopefully uh, I can go in and contribute and maybe turn it around. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Look, it's downright tragic we missed out on the GOAT's big moment based on how he dressed later on in life. Standouts of the late 80s included the late Lynn Bias' Italian-made pinstripe suit, Chuck Person looking like he's going to prom on an ice cream truck, and Vladi Divac's best impression of a college professor. Things immediately got more interesting in the 90s, not only thanks to the immaculate mullet of one Dwayne Shinsis or these paint splatter backdrops, but also due to a much needed infusion of color. Players' vibrant personal styles influenced suit choices more by 1994, when Jalen Rose absolutely switched up the game with this red pinstripe getup. It was two suits. It was the red and white one, because I told myself I was gonna get drafted by the Clippers. And then there was the lime green one, because I felt like I was going to get drafted by the Sonics. Red wasn't as memorable on Eric Dampier in 1996, but Samaki Walker's headwear certainly was. And we can't talk about the 90s without mentioning Teal, which was everywhere you looked, including on Maurice Taylor's three-piece. The ultra-baggy look influenced by the hip-hop wave had fully taken over by the end of the decade, but it would reach a whole new level in a few years' time. With LeBron headlining the now legendary 2003 class, more eyeballs than ever were on the King and Mello and Bosch and D-Wade. In its third annual draft fashion review, ESPN's Page 2 called LeBron's all-white everything ensemble best in show. And more than a few outlets called it appropriate attire for the man expected to be a basketball messiah in Cleveland. I was going to wear the same suit as this guy, but I, I'm glad I didn't because we would have clashed. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'll see you later. All right. But the fits at that draft are best remembered for being some of the worst of all time. The most oversized, the most billowy pants, the most extra buttons. Things didn't immediately get more trim, but with the NBA instituting a culture-crushing dress code in 05, the landscape changed. Players must dress in business casual attire during any team or league business, so expect to see sport jackets and slacks rather than throwback jerseys and t-shirts. Now the players kept emulating musicians, but high fashion tastes for both groups bloomed at the same time. We saw Argyle sweaters thanks to college dropout Eric Kanye, Joakim Noah and James Harden brought back bow ties like Fonsworth Bentley. Wes Johnson is an underrated bridge between some of the nondescript looks of a decade ago and today's free-for-alls. The double-breasted blazer and tartan pants would make Andre Three Stacks proud. NBA ballers learned to love the dress code and certainly inspired newcomers by turning arena halls into runways. The biggest boost to NBA draft fashion this decade, though, might just be the NFL, which ratcheted up visibility even further by first rolling out a red carpet for draftees in 2010. The NBA didn't follow suit, pun fully intended, by the way, until 2017. In those intervening years, the cuts got slimmer, the patterns got bolder, the shoes got spikier, and the rap name drops got more and more pricey. Social media lets you know who's getting a fit off instantly, and personal brands are building before anyone even plays a game. The evolution of NBA draft fashion owes everything to the progression of men's style overall. Fellas dress better because the options are better, and they care enough to take advantage of that. It's no guarantee this all ages gracefully for the same reason Karl Malone got years of grief for a look in 85 that really seems tame today. Who knows where we go from something like Kevin Knox's Fortnite branded suit lining complete with gamer tag. Sponsored suit linings have already been a thing for NFL players, and let's not forget ad patches 
has already adorned NBA jerseys. Let's just hope these dudes keep trying to one-up each other. From the good to the bad to the flat-out confusing, we'll all be watching, ready to give props, and also ready to roast.